This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Welcome back to Human Humane Architecture here in our tropical paradise of Honolulu, Hawaii. That if you look at popular media for sure, or lifestyle media actually has been the coolest a while ago, almost like a century ago, I hate to say that. And we got to get it back to that. And DeSoto and I have been on a roll recently mm -hmm. at so the beginning speak. of this year, so yeah. to speak, yes. to look for some of these gems from yes. this century that yes. might potentially be endangered. Yes, that's right. And so today we want to uh, focus on one that is sort of typical for a couple of buildings here mid-century. And I would say they were on this sort of um, hula hoop thing. Hula hoop thing, we and, might say that. Circular buildings. Let's bring the first picture and we see, uh, if we can get the first picture now, we can see uh, actually uh, there we go. three of them. Three and of the them. one at the bottom is my neighbor uh, back in Waikiki. That's a circle tower mm -hmm. uh, from the 60s. And so is the one above, which is the Jade Tower in, in Kaimuki. Yes. Both still existing, but the one we talk about today is the other one. Which one is that? And that is the Varsity Building, which is located on University Avenue. And we have been told by somebody in the know that it is threatened with potential demolition. And so. We, oh, no. Oh, yes. We oh, don't no. like that. And we are and, sorry about that. And, and we want to address that. And nor wants uh, historical why wants that. And I pulled that picture here, if we can zoom back. Um, out of it, um, we uh, can see, I just pulled that from the web, so you guys can do that too. And they've been writing this article, I think, some years ago, in like yes. 2013, yes. where they already sensed um, that that might happen. Correct. So we want to start talking about the creator of the Varsity Building, and that is the next picture. Um, who is an architect, and we uh, apologize because we, you know, once we heard this, like a few days ago, we said, okay, let's do the next show, yeah. let's scramble together. You didn't even have the chance to go into your marvelous archives, or at least not dig deep. Right. But you went out and took pictures while I was down with the flu. Yes. So we did our very best, and I pulled this here from myself when uh, we at Delco Momo had a talk story that also you did one of the best ones ever. Thank you. And this one was uh, um, uh, Pete Wimberly, the architect we're going to talk about, uh, later partner, uh, Mr. Gu, uh, Don Gu, who uh, was giving a slideshow about it. And yeah. so I took this from the screen, and this is a picture of a slide he did, and you see the, the master of the time, Vladimir Osipov, that's very familiar yes. to you personally and yes. professionally, sitting, and you see Alfred Price standing next to him, and the guy sort of almost in the middle to the left who looks the most casual is our guy of today's show, and that's Pete Wimberly. And there he is in his Aloha shirt. Exactly, and while sort of rushing this time, we didn't pull from a previous show that we had shared probably his most, or let's say globally yeah. his most popular yeah. building, and which one was that? Well, that's so. the Ala Moana building, and uh, when we say it's popular, it's because when it was constructed in 1961, it was so prominent in the skyline of Honolulu that on television and in movies, you very frequently could see mm -hmm. that Ala Moana building in very prominently in the background. And, and plus, I brought something here. And you brought American. something here. And let's get back to the studio so that everybody can see what Martin has got. And that is the German DVD of the film Blue Hawaii and starring Elvis Presley. And in that film, in more than one scene, you can see the Ala Moana building in the background. And you can see that too. And uh, I have to thank my best friends, uh, Kirsten and Stefan, who gave me that. Uh -huh. So it's called Blaues Hawaii. That's the German version. Yes. And it's available these days in the, um, in the stores. So yes. you can order As this. It should be. It, As it, it shows be. it's still popular. That's right. right. There's this building, but at the end of it, sort of the celebration at the end of the movie, it celebrates another building. Absolutely, it celebrates the uh, Coco Ponce Hotel. Exactly. And we did an entire show yeah, we because did. it's unfortunately one that is threatened as well. Yes. So poor Pete, yeah. left and right, his work basically gets uh, endangered. Yes. So, uh, but since we're in Honolulu, we choose to f uh, show another project, which is the next picture, which Correct. is also something we had touched at a certain point. 
and and um, our most activist journalist uh, Kurt Sandburn was the most outspoken uh, labeling what has replaced that building, which is yeah. a high rise, a timeshare condo. Yes. And he has taken it as the prime shot for his article that he called Ugly Honolulu. Yeah. We analyzed a little why in a show that we called the uh, Lanai's or something like that, right? Yeah. yeah. But this one here was prior to that, and that was the Waikikian, as we yes. can as we can see. And so that was Pete in his early era, which is very ticky, right? Yeah. But as you pointed out, it was also not specific to Hawaii. It was very no. Californian. It was this, this type of style, which took from a lot of different original Pacific indigenous mm -hmm. uh, it, uh, cultures, was found in a bunch of other places, particularly California, but other places in the U.S. and, and even internationally, because yeah. it was exotica. It was an amalgamation of th elements from different things that were not supposed to be 100% accurate to the cultures yeah, they yeah. came from. No, in fact, that was... In, in the last time we talked about this hyperbolic, hyperbolic paraboloid, that's mm -hmm. a tongue breaker in many ways. Yes, it is. But I tried my best. Uh, I went into North Carolina when I had a job offer at, at NC State, and there was a building just like that. This one here, sort of Pete, uh, maybe wasn't at its best yet as far as what he became later, because you can see this was fully glazed, and you yes. can see the sun hitting it. Yeah. So this probably needed a C, which isn't quite, you know, in line with a sort of Polynesian, mm -hmm. sort of pre-fossil, you know, easy breezy kind Correct. of way. But um, there were many Pete's, and the next one is next picture is another Pete, once again, me from Don Gu's uh, slideshow at Docomomo. Uh, he was racing his Lotus, his orange-yellow Lotus, together with this familiar-looking guy, Steve McQueen. Mm -hmm. So I labeled this Pete the Playboy. All right. So he was a guy who really enjoyed life, and we paired this sort of era with uh, another project of his that's luckily still there, at least in large, and that is which one? Next picture. Uh, the next picture is the Bank of Hawaii Tower in Waikiki on Kalakaua Avenue. And as you pointed out, unfortunately, the ground floor has been changed quite a bit from its original appearance, as you can see in these pictures. But the bulk of the building is still there. It has this very interesting exterior covering, which people wondered about what it was supposed to be at the time in the mm -hmm. 60s. Was it supposed to look like a palm tree? Was it supposed to look like the top of a pineapple? He, as I understood it, said it isn't supposed to resemble anything specific that's natural. It is just a pattern. And I think that's an excellent point. And dating that, this, uh, the Waikikian was early 50s or the middle something? Middle 50s, 1955, 56. So this was 10 years later, this is a 10 decade years later. later. So he had sort of moved on. And um, it's, it's exactly like you say. It's, you can see in it whatever you want to see it. So the, the typical tourist probably sees something exotic in it, yeah. some palm leaves or something like that. Yeah. But the, uh, the scientist, the engineer, just sees a repetitive pattern that is basically arches, and arches is one yeah. of the best forms and structure that the Romans and all other cultures have used. Have used for millennia. The, the user, I know someone who lives in there who says, you know, it's actually keeping us cool significantly. Not perfectly, you right. know, but uh, sort of like in the range of the IBM building, which we'll yes. get to at the very end of the show. Right. So very nice, true modern building that different than postmodernism that just wants you to see that one thing only. Right. This here allows you, you know, in a democratic way to see a multitude of, right. of things. Right, right. So next picture is is Pete, um, the provocateur, because these nice and sexy legs. Yeah, that he's is, wearing shorts. That is Pete. And so if we would put our feet here up, maybe <laughs> we do right. at this we point. That's that. what we will allow yeah. ourselves to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we believe in easy breezy as well. Sure so there we are do. all these guys who come to the tropics with their pants on and are overdressed. He wasn't. He believed. He went to the beach. That's where he got his ideas and he sketched. Yeah. So he was a truly exotic uh, uh, guy, and so probably his most exotic building or representative for that attitude is our today's project. And the next picture shows that this is a picture, all these next pictures come from you. You took us here, and this is uh, great because you took it from where the tree is. And I teach this class here, which is called tree architecture, which recognizes that the most comfortable place to be in Hawaii is under a tree. Right. And so this building has a lot to do with nature, we think. And in fact, we referred to it in a previous show that was called uh, Tropical Brutalism. And we made this reference to the saguaro cactus, right. which I was familiar with because I was in Arizona for two years before yeah. I came here. And a, a cylindrical form, which this building assumes, is a natural form. There exactly. are a lot of plants that assume yeah. a cylindrical form, not just cacti, 
but the trunks of trees are roughly cylindrical exactly. as well. And just like, not just formally postmodernism, but modern, high modern, a saguaro cactus has that crazy shape and section because it shades itself. It surely does. Always, at any time of the day, significant parts are self-shaded. That's how it survives. Right. And so Pete <coughs> said, should architecture be here on the islands? And the next uh, shot is one that I took um, <clears throat> on my daily bicycle up, up the hill to, to Manoa. And I always felt, you know, when you, when you step back and you see it from a distance, it's nicely pixelated. It's got, you know, these shadow dots. Yes. And, and so has the mountains in the back. Yes. So there's a sort of performative, and in, in the term performance is also the, the, the term form. So there is this sort of alluding to a, a natural phenomenon that Correct. in fact... Correct. And, and the cylindrical part of the building is not solid. No. You are not looking at a solid concrete surface there. Exactly. So stepping back a little bit, next picture. This is the most familiar view that we're afraid uh, will be soon gone. But uh, that hasn't always been the case because, in fact, if I would have been here as long as you have on the island, mm -hmm. I would remember what we see in the next picture. Right, because next door to the Varsity Building, and in fact built before the Varsity Building, was the Varsity Theater. And you can see in this photograph the Varsity Theater in the foreground and the Varsity Building in the background. And the Varsity Building took its name from the theater, which was from about 1939. Mm -hmm. And the Varsity Building is from the 60s. The Varsity Theater was a typical streamlined building of that time period of the 30s. It had a nice exterior, not only that uh, thrusting out facade, but it had a large open space, which as you can see in the upper picture on the very top, was to accommodate people waiting in line or waiting for the next movie to start. Mm -hmm. So it had an ample exterior part. Yeah. Um, but those two buildings right next to each other meant that you didn't see either one of them completely by itself because you saw them together. And mm -hmm. today, of course, the Varsity Building has no neighbors, and so it stands by itself. Yeah, and then the lush vegetation seems tropic exotic yeah. to me, but picture top left, unfortunately gone, I think in 2008. 2008, it was down. demolished, so the Varsity Theater is gone. Okay, so let's hope we can make that pitch. I don't do it to this one. <laughs> let's go inside, which you did next picture. Right, so there we are inside the Varsity Building, which has small curving uh, interior hallways, which in some ways are not that inviting. And you made the additional comment about, well, first of all, the hallways inside the Ala Moana building, which we see on the middle lower right, are a lot less forbidding than that. They are more open. They're more mm -hmm. easy and nice to walk into. But we also fre re recently discussed the Kahala Apartments, which has a beautiful exterior but the interior hallways, again, are really not very pleasant to walk around in. And those are the two pictures that you see in the bottom right. Exactly. And but but the, we imagined in the next picture, right, that if you would go inside into a unit, right. which we didn't have the chance, but as we sort of were guesstimating in the previous show about the Brie Soleil, that it must be pretty pleasant yeah. because you're not you know, tortured by the sun exactly. and there's no glare. Right. So it's probably a very comfortable um, work atmosphere. Yeah within the building. Right, but you do have a view as well. It's you not completely cut off, you but you also view. are not, as you said, the glare is gonna be considerably reduced mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. from, and this is at a time period also, let's say in the 60s, they didn't have film to put on glass yet yeah, to, reduce, to reduce glare. So this yep. is, you just had plain glass, and if the sun was coming in, that's what you yeah. got. Yeah, and next picture is uh, when you step out of the building and into that open uh, staircase, that's where I sort of reflected on what you just said, where the Kahala Hiltons, and you said that was a linear, I mean, that was a long, yeah, long, long, long trough, exactly. you know, trap trough. Right. But, but this one here is a relatively short, small building and short circle, right. and it reminded me of the John Graham um, Ala Moana building that we keep talking yeah. about, which they allowed itself the luxury, John Graham, another purely commercial yes. architect. This was a commercial project, yeah. a commercial proje program, but they allowed the luxury to basically sacrifice one rentable unit to make it the hallway that goes out. Right. And that way you basically protrude out and you get that sort of beam of light right. that basically gives right. you orientation like right. a natural wave. wave and I also want to say, too, of this building, the, the Varsity building consists of two separate <coughs> units. 
they are connected with walkways at each floor, mm -hmm. but there's the large cylindrical building and then there's the skinny rectangular building on the right, mm -hmm. which you see is where the stairs and the elevators are. So it's really two yeah. units and next plus, to each other. And plus you taught me that what we see on the right side was originally not there. Correct. It was open, easy breezy, and as for wind blocking, you know, this yes. is where the Manoa wind comes. And, and the, the rain, rain comes, can come with it too. Did that. Right. So let's go to the next picture, which sort of celebrates that iconic staircase sculpture, you can say. But, but then again, let's go back to these iconic fins were even more iconic. And you, next picture, and you walked inside and, and, and documented this interstitial right. space between the fins and actually the, the glass. Correct. And that's pretty remarkable because that's sort of under current developer terms of sort of wasted yeah. space. But it's actually not because it helps cooling the building yes. because they got that buffer where right. this, you know, the air is already not air overheated. There's air circulation. Plus, he probably never in his life, the opposite of it, uh, you know, imagined that it would have allowed the depth for that nasty AC machine. That's right. But it allows the depth for window cleaning and yeah. for keeping, uh, maintaining these, um, these slabs, which yeah. we will talk actually in about the second to next slide. But the next slide uh, here is you once again zooming in uh, into these iconic fins and what's in between. Right. And we discovered and did, something you, interesting. Yeah, and you pointed out something which I would not have thought about, but in, in terms of engineering, the folded look of these inter, interweaving uh, panels actually adds strength to them rather than mm -hmm. them being a flat slab. So that V shape makes them stronger but it also adds interesting visual texture to the outside exactly. of the building. Exactly. If the camera could go to studio for one second, we could just simply demonstrate that here yeah, with our yeah. cheat sheet here. Right. Which, you know, that is pretty instable. Right. But once so you here's start our, to... Here's our flat thing. Mm -hmm. and, and once then, you start to bend, then you get structural integrity to it. Right. So right. once again, whereas, you know, you can look at these spandrels as a chevron, and that's one of the most popular pattern yeah. that you find these days. You just throw them on buildings. Right. Here, throwing on wasn't the intention. The no. intention was very engineering, Correct. was very clever, Correct. was very much like the any indigenous culture would have done it in exactly. the past, including it here, been, it wouldn't do have been the just, most with the least. You know? Just to make it pretty, exactly. it would have been because it made some sense. So that, to that degree, you can call this sort of an, an you know, evolved indigenous building Correct. because he was just thinking like everyone yeah. had been thinking in the past in Correct. a progressive way and was just like doing this with modern means and methods and materials right, right? so so this is really interesting yeah so this next picture he took uh, and the left part was taken where in a sort of Okay, that's at the very bottom of some of those vertical panels. And this is where a large vehicle happened to strike these and chip off the concrete so that you can see the interior structure. And there's actually uh, rebar in there as well as this sort of... Uh, strips of metal that have holes in them. Mm -hmm. And that's how... That's the structural part of what was concrete. I said originally when I saw these, I thought maybe they were metal with a finish on them. And you pointed out, no, they truly are concrete. That's and what you said in that Tropical Brutalism show. But I have to say they probably shouldn't have been concrete because, because there's no space in there to cover the rebar sufficiently. Right. And I want to give credits and thank uh, Kamehameha Schools, maintenance, uh, you know, bosses, uh, Bob Oda and, and Paul Kay, because for the... For many years, you've seen this building almost all the time in scaffolding, and they've been doing, you know, very, very careful, uh, you know, uh, spalling repair. And, and so, so thank you guys for doing that. And probably little, you know, did they know that there would be um, sort of a, a, a sad, desperate uh, sort of um, destination for the building to be taken down. But the, the top right picture here is our previous guest from the early show, Urban Transcendence, Les Campers was just demonstrating to our uh, emerging talents here that these days you can make these fins again by using the carbon fiber yeah. um, reinforcement Correct. that doesn't have the spalding problem it, anymore. Right. So you it's can actually rust. make them. I mean, these right. days, that shows us again how ahead of the yeah. time Pete was. Correct. Right? And, and the problem with rebar is it rusts. And carbon fiber isn't going to rust. Exactly. So if it doesn't no. rust, it's not going to crack the concrete. And talking ahead of its time that Pete had, next picture um, is also true typologically. And this is a project that has informed me the most when I was in the Midwest 
a student in my mid-twenties, and, and this was the hottest building and still is. This is IM Pays, and we have East West Center from here. Yeah. We're blessed. And this is a bank, uh, the NBC Bank at its time. Now it's bought by Wells Fargo, as you can see in the picture I took at the, at the top left. Oh, yeah. And it's, uh, it's a marvelous building that has a lot in common. You see that sort of a structural, bioclimatic, uh, fin screen, brise but, uh, but also more important, as importantly, is that you know, the structure um, 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 you know, makes that stretch uh, to keep the lobby all yeah. open. It's yeah. one big room that it's free flow. It is as big as you can see at the top right that we were able to have these exhibits uh, in the building, these big architectural urban um, displays. And so uh, that gets us to the next picture because uh, Varsity was, was not unsimilar. And these are all uh, drawings we're able to obtain from Pete. And actually, we have to make a correction because the firm at that point was still called Wimbledon and Cook. Okay. And this one, the, the drawings at the very top right are actually signed by Mr. Cook, his partner. Oh, okay. okay. So, but, you know, that was before it became, uh, you know, how the firm is, is called right. today. Right. And so uh, these are original drawings. And if you, if you look at that, how passionately and playful he was sort of undulating that theme of circular yeah. and of swooping curves, that's just, just pretty, pretty remarkable. Yes. And obviously, a, a leftover from that original function as a bank, as you can see, First National Bank is that sort of a window yeah, where you can drive teller. by. Exactly. Yeah. It's got a road entirely around it so people could drive around and use the drive up teller. And so, if you're still not convinced why this is so innovative, um, if you look at the plan, usually, if you're not an architect, uh, you know, where structure go down, goes down is mostly more visible. It's chunky, so like yes. black dots. But were black dots in these drawings? There aren't any. And, and the next picture is, the, he didn't forget them, no. No, next but I mean, picture. it's not in the center. Let's go. And there's, that's, so, what the, that's what the lobby looks like today. And thanks to you, you shot this picture here. And this is like the best. I mean, usually we don't stand up in studio, I know, but let's do this here. Okay, Hopefully they okay. forgive us for all right, that. All right. So, so the building the functions studio. go on your one leg, please, okay. because that's what the building is doing. Okay. And then it reaches out okay, come, with, come one arm, in, come with one arm. With one arm. And then it is not touching itself, but it's touching a ring. And I should have brought a little hula ring here, and yeah. we would have been holding on to that hula ring. Right, right. And that is how the building basically works. And then all the top floors coming up are going to rest on our arm. Correct. And isn't that crazy? Okay, so here, this is one leg is off the floor. We're standing yes. on one leg, and mm -hmm. we're holding our mm -hmm. arms out. Mm -hmm. And in the center, that's the that's the that's what's holding. That it up. is the empty empty and the space. Empty space. So when we look at the when we look at the interior of the ground floor of the varsity building. That's what that is. Exactly. And, and give us the next uh, picture, uh, please. That's the drawing that basically is the reflected ceiling plan, is how we call that. And usually that's the least unsexy, uh, that's the least sexy, the most yeah. unsexy plan. But here it reveals a super ingenious. And it wouldn't surprise me if, you know, Pete Wimberley uh, and uh, worked with um, um, basically Dr. Alfred Yee on that one. I don't recall. Oh, yeah. But it's just like it's just like amazing. And what's also amazing is the next picture because you were in there and, and got an impression of the most current use because it's been empty, vacant yeah. uh, for quite some while. And, and you were rather impressed by what's in yeah. there, right? So what's in there now is something called the YY Collective, which is a Hawaiian themed gathering place. They have uh, art shows, they do music, they do other types of events, and it's making use of this one big space that we just were talking about that's got this wonderful dynamic ceiling with the open beams that they've accentuated with the new lighting that they've put in, and they are using the vault as part of their space as well. So what you were pointing out is this is very innovative, of an innovative Hawaiian use mm -hmm. of what was originally an innovative building. And, and we're really, wow, if I look at the clock, we got to keep going yeah, we gotta here. Go. So and it's, it's, it's innovative because it's, it's, it's within Hawaiian tradition down to the details. Next picture, yeah. down to the bathroom door. Yeah, right. And the bathroom door just simply points out that this is for, for men, for women, and for transgendered people as well. So, so this that's is inclusive. really inclusive, and that's what Hawaiian culture traditionally was. And, and should be. And should be. But and unfortunately, hope everyone is seating, uh, seated. We are, yes. uh, again. So next picture. This is where our fear comes from, because yeah. this is exactly across the intersection of where the varsity building is. This is new, exclusive, hermetic, invasive student housing going up. What drives me the most crazy, and you're from here, so I, I, I can't imagine how you must feel, where Hawaiian terminology yeah. is basically used slash abused 
for basically invasive development. Yeah, that's and why is it so invasive? Next picture, because if we're up on our university hill, next picture, pictures I took, the right picture is you barely see varsity at all, but you start to see that big chunk, yeah. which the left part of the picture is that monster. It's that Hale Mahana new building. And so why is that, why are we fearful? Next picture as far as the varsity building is concerned. Well, you that's what that it's going to be overshadowed by the, the, the new Hale Mahana building, which the varsity building right now by itself looks really large and substantial. Mm -hmm. But once that new building is there, it's going to permanently change that neighborhood and make it a high rise, a yeah. high rise neighborhood. And we're afraid what's going to happen until they develop <laughs> it's going to be some years and there's going to be more Christmas trees, which is what it's used for right. for that time of the year, or more RVs, which I thought RVs are not allowed on the island. So never mind. Now we're doing a stretch. We're like uh, apologizing to Pete, but saying, you know, if we don't want to be called um, basically yesterday people. Right. And don't want to be called uh, Waldorf and Statler, the guys right, on the Muppet over, Show. And overly the, sentimental, right? And the two if, old guys in exactly. the Exactly. If we want to say we believe in change and yes. evolution has to happen, uh, the next couple picture is going to uh, be um, a project we've been doing at school. And you've been starting to talk better about it than I could well, do. Well, it, so, it's, uh, it's called Primitiva, and it is not unlike the varsity building, a round building. It would be a high rise, but it would have a lot of innovative activities in it. And so it would be more open to the, this is the rooftop, so this would be open for people to be growing things, enjoying mm -hmm. nature more. Um, if we see in the next picture, we've got, and if I'm correct, this is the, this is just one of the different floors, correct? Exactly. And so the floors open outwards, you are looking, everybody looks outwards, you've got this inner part, which again has more open spaces for people mm -hmm. to do things, you've and got greenery. Exactly, and this, I'm looking from where the staircase is, is the same thing, what we just did like we just varsity, did in the varsity, we pulled it out. Right, yeah. correct. And in the next picture, we've got, this is the ground floor, mm -hmm. and again, open space, we've got the open stairway, we've got walkways with the central part open, like we just saw, yeah, yeah. and on the left, we've got that kooky mode of transportation, which is essentially a ski lift, which has been proposed for moving people around in that neighborhood yeah. rather than automobiles. That traces back to at the bottom right to Nicole Horry, a board member here on Think Tech Hawaii, who is proposing that, bringing like the students and Manoa residents up the hill in an easy breezy Correct. and enjoyable way. And that's very breezy, mm -hmm. I can tell you. And in the next picture, this is, whoa, tell me what's going on here. Well, this is, we go one step further where we were complaining about the hermeticness of, yeah. of Pete's core. We opened this up. This yeah. has a green light. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. So and it's got a central skylight. Exactly, exactly. And that's the central part of Primitiva. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And on the ground floor, next picture, uh, on the very ground floor, we would have in our, there we go, we've got a farmer's market. So we've got people bringing in food and you're buying food, you're intermingling with people, and that's where you're getting your sustenance. So once again, it's a social yeah. space and place. It's dedicated to the public. It's not exclusive. Yeah. It's not a controlled, security-controlled lobby where it's Correct. all about if you're Which, a resident, come in, right. show your card, right? Exactly, and this is not like that. So this is a break from what the... Most high-rises are now, which are exclusive, in which if you do not have a pass, you don't get to go in. Exactly. And not because of all that that you were so kindly explaining. The next picture is that's how it would look like. Right. In that same similar location, except it's filled with greenery. And I don't think you'd see the Beatles walking across the street, but perhaps <laughs> in your vision, you might. It's, it's exactly. And, and uh, we want to be very clear. We've been saying this not as a Docomomo board member, right. founding board member, parts of me as a University of Hawaii member, but mainly as a practicing architect Correct. who is a big fan of Pete Wimberley. Yes. And as you can see, is informed and inspired by him. He's yeah. really one of my mentors. Yeah. And that being said, let's not even think about what you just tried yeah. to promote in the last couple of pictures, but yeah. let's make our last picture, which is the last picture. Our last picture and this is... is the, the, this is something, if we can, um, there we go. this is a picture I pulled from, from the web from Flickr. So uh, and at the first glimpse, because it's grayscale, I thought this is a historic picture, but you can see from the contemporary cars, it's, it's not, not right? that old. So someone, you know, many people out here must think this building is so iconic, it's so cool, and we call it the show, uh, the show uh, Vanity, uh, Varsity, Varsity Vanity. Varsity Vanity. And this is just like on Vanity Fair, right? Nicole Kidman is posing as Marilyn Monroe. So Correct. there's something timeless about certain right. people, about certain actors, about 
certain characters. images. And this actor is certainly one of them. And we want to point out to a positive case, because it's a positive show, and we are yes. progressive, positive yes, people. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Because there was a case with Howard Hughes, where they also originally didn't appreciate one of their buildings and wanted to tear it down. Yes. And that's the IBM building. And, today, and then they got it. And this picture was pulled from them and proudly celebrated it as right. their showcase, their Correct. showroom. Correct. And both the IBM building and the Varsity building have unique exteriors designed just for them. And both of them are iconic. Both of them, one is a survivor now, the other deserves to be a survivor. Now. All right. So to everyone out there who owns the Varsity, who wants mm -hmm. to own it, who wants to redevelop, redevelop around it. But let's keep it. But let's keep it. Yes. All right. With that, stay exotic and stay like Pete. And <laughs> see you next week. Bye-bye.